Hi folks, uh, Dr. Rob Sivers, the Carb Addiction Doc. I'm going to today list, not completely, but a list of supplements that I never take and I would never ever recommend for you to take, even though they may have some biologic reference or benefit. So one of the ways that a lot of people look at supplements is they look at what may be needed in a particular area of your body. Okay, my liver needs this, or in my blood vessels, if I've got heart disease, I this supplement helps in my blood vessels. That may be true. That may be true, okay? However, what you want to do is to take whatever supplement is being recommended and sold by somebody you trust and believe on the internet and understand how your body gets that supplement from your mouth, through your intestine, through the enzymes in your intestine, through your liver, and concentrates it, or at least provides it, to where you believe the site of action of that supplement is. And I see people going crazy with all these longevity things, polypeptide infusions and peptide infusions that have no value. Those are just amino acids or very, very marginal value at massive cost. But there's always a placebo effect. There's always a placebo effect. So when you're going to take a supplement, look not only at the benefits, but also look at the risks and the downsides. Okay, But this video is primarily about whether the supplement you're taking is actually available or necessary in its current form. So let's walk through a list of supplements I absolutely do not recommend. Number one, CoQ10. If you are taking a statin or a cholesterol lowering medication, one of the side effects of that medication is to block the formulation and the storage of CoQ10 in your liver. So yes, if you're on a statin, take CoQ10. But if you're not on a statin, and I don't recommend statins for very few people, if you're not on a statin, don't take CoQ10. And if you deprescribe, you say, look, screw it, I've been on a statin for 10 years, I just had a heart attack, I'm going to stop the statin. Then finish the bottle of CoQ10 you already have and don't buy more. But CoQ10 is one I will never recommend unless you're on a statin. The next one are amino acid and protein supplements. So people are, oh, collagen, I love my collagen, I love my leucine, I love my uh, protein shakes, my... <sighs> Folks, unless you're under a year of age, those products do not get absorbed the way they're sold or the way they go into your mouth. Collagen is a string of amino acids. First of all, if you eat meat, if you eat any animal product, there's a ton of collagen already in that meat. The entire scaffolding of muscles and meat is made of collagen. So you're getting plenty of natural collagen in the meat. You don't need to supplement it. However, if you oh, I must take collagen, somebody said that's going to do this for me. What the intestine does with collagen is it just breaks it down into simple amino acids. We adult humans have lost the ability to absorb complex polypeptides, protein chains. So we cleave that protein down, the enzymes in our gut, cleave it down to simple amino acids, and then in the liver it gets rebuilt into new collagen, into new fibrin, into new proteins, amino acids, uh, sorry, uh, um, hormones, enzymes. That's the job of the liver under, under certain hormonal regulation. So the job of the liver is to build your own. And the best you can do is to feed it amino acids from animal products where it gets all 20, 21 amino acids so it can rebuild proteins in your body that are of use to you. But to take collagen as a supplement is, inexpens is expensive and you're not helping yourself. Just eat a steak. Hi folks, Carb Addiction Doc here. And... Ketone IQ has recently come out with a product. It's this. It's their regular ketone IQ um, uh, ketone supplement, exogenous ketone. But this one contains caffeine, okay? And I've been playing around with it. I do get a boost. I've had some people just not like the caffeine. Uh, it gets their heart racing too much. I found value to this. However, here's what intrigued me. This ketone IQ is made 
from a green tea extract. And the caffeine comes from green tea. And I, man, I didn't understand that. And I went to look at some of the green teas. I, I drink mostly rooibos tea, but I looked at some of my green teas. And the majority of my green teas that I have in my home contain a sizable amount of caffeine. So be very cautious. Look at the green tea you're drinking, especially if you're drinking it between dinner and bedtime when I try not to drink caffeine. Make sure that there is no caffeine there. Don't be fooled and know the product because this, this ketone IQ was an aha moment for me. Now, the green tea ketone IQ is something I use from time to time in the morning. I've been playing around with it as a surrogate for my first cup of coffee, on, particularly on run days for me. And I've noticed that it's a, it's a really, really cool thing to run on early in the morning. There's no way I'm going to take this in the evening. But look into the green tea. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I know other teas do. But check out your green tea and make sure it isn't laced with caffeine. You're only helping those that make money. And that is true for the majority of those amino acid supplements. Okay, so you're taking leucine. Oh, my leucine's going to, my levels are low. Well, the liver is just going to incorporate leucine into other proteins. And if you've got too much leucine, it's just going to turn it into sugar. Because there is no store for amino acids in the human body. You either turn them into proteins, they you incorporate into different tissues, or under gluconeogenesis, you turn those amino acids to sugar. And then you store them as fat. And that's what happens with the majority of protein shakes. The problem with the protein shakes is not what's in there, it's what's not in there. There's only one protein shake that has everything in it. And everybody's got an argument against doing this one. They'll spend five bucks on a crappy protein shake because of some marketing, but they won't drink a glass of milk. And a glass of milk has everything in it in the right proportions that you need to make good human protein. <laughs> But I'll drink my protein shake. <laughs> okay. It's called a sugar shake. Then the next category of supplements I would not take are the ones that don't arrive at destination. And very often because people have got heart disease, oh, I've got a positive CAC score. They're taking NAD. They're taking nitric oxide. They're taking niacin. Don't take those, folks. Don't take those. It's your choice. I mean, I don't care if you take them, but you're wasting your money and you're lulling yourself into a false sense of complacency that you're taking something for your heart. They do not arrive at destination. The gut and the liver destroy them or use them up and produce their own. So taking those supplements because some biology textbook says that they get produced at the heart level and you want to get there, doesn't work that way. Does not work that way. Take me down the biologic pathway where a tagged niacin molecule arrives at destination. Where a tagged nitric oxide arrives at destination. It doesn't happen. So be very cautious about those supplements and rather invest in reducing your, or improving your metabolic health than taking a whole bunch of supplements that are supposed to protect you. Then the next big one for me are the polypharmacy supplements. Where you take a product, it's called, oh, New Naturals, or oh, it's usually some Kumbaya fancy California type name. Oh, uh, Fresh Air Kumbaya, or the Lotus Position supplements, or uh, when anything has a label that is a Kumbaya label that doesn't have the product name in it. This is B1 or Benfotamine. This is B12, Cyanocobalamin. Be very cautious about the formulation. Be very cautious about the formulation. Because they're pitching a story and you may not need everything that's in there. The number of times I see people taking some formulation, healthy eyes, healthy prostate, healthy this, beetroot juice. They're taking a bunch of crap because it's supposed to kumbaya make you better. And it doesn't. It does not only does it not do that, but there may be products in there that you're already topped up on. The number of times I see people with unmeasurably high B12 levels. I check B12 regularly. But I'm doing B12. Yeah, but you're taking the Kumbaya supplement. You're taking the polypharmacy mixture of stuff. Don't do that. 
Be goal directed in your supplementation. And then the other one that we see a lot of people taking is spices. Oh, I'm taking turmeric. I'm taking ginger root. I'm taking this pollen or that thing. In a cup, I, I, my brain can't even remember what, what they all are. But all these things, eat them in your food if you're going to eat them. But to take them as an expensive supplement and, and watch my upcoming story on the caution of turmeric. Be very cautious. The Indians call it masala without an R. I call it marsala. Masala. Those are spices. If you like the taste of them, have them. If you like to say the word ashwagandha, buy it and take it by all means, but don't, don't expect to benefit from them. So be very, very cautious with things that licorice root and beetroot juice and acai berries. Those are products looking for a story to tell so that you will buy the product. Understand truly why you need that product What's deficient in you? It's not about being super healthy. What's deficient in you? And then if you need to go direct that. I don't ask people whether they're taking supplements. I ask them, what supplements are you on? Because everybody's taking something. And it's rare I get somebody who's healthy enough that they're not taking anything. The next video will, will cover a few of the supplements that I personally take and that I recommend. And I'm very low-key on supplements. I hope this makes you think. I hope this makes you line up the 20 bottles of supplements you're taking and look to see what's actually in there and how many different formulations of the same substance you're taking. And then ask the question, what is the expected benefit and am I seeing it? I don't mind if you take them. I'm not telling you don't take them. But understand predictably why you need it and why you're taking it and have an outcome metric. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. I hope this helps.